Let's check out the weirdest Steam Deck doc. How's it going everyone and welcome to Deck Ready. Today I've got my weekly news update for you guys, but the first thing I wanted to jump into is this thing. So this showed up from JSOX in the mail once again with no warning or anything like that. They just send stuff over and then I gotta open it up and try and decipher what it is. Now at first I thought this was just like a fast charger or something that you could use with the Steam Deck and that's all it was gonna be. And then I looked at the front of it and noticed that there's an HDMI port along with a USB-A port and a USB-C port. So I tried to figure it out, but there were no instructions or anything in the box. So I headed over to the JSOX website and this thing is the three-in-one charger dock for Steam Deck with 3.3 foot cable and it's called the HC4503 and it's on sale right now for $39.99. Now yes, you heard me correctly. This is a dock and the way that it works is actually kind of interesting. So you would plug it into a wall outlet and then you take a USB-C cord and plug it into the USB-C port and plug that into your Steam Deck, which you can put on a stand or anywhere, right? You could just leave it sitting on a desk or something like that. And it's actually like on par with a lot of the other docks. It does 4K 60 video output Output, and it also has 45 watt power delivery through that USB-C port so you'll be able to charge your Steam Deck and have it be fully powered if you are using it docked. Now I was trying to think of why you would want to go with something like this over the other docks that you have at your disposal of which there are many. Which side note if you want to see pretty much every dock available for the Steam Deck and even some that got cancelled before they were released I just did a video last week going over all of the ones that have been sent to me so go check that out but uh yeah I think this this is more for traveling. Like instead of bringing a full size Steam Deck dock, if you can just have the charger and the dock all in one and it's the size of like the same brick you charge your phone with, the utility is very obvious there for someone who uses like a backpack when they travel or doesn't want to have a whole ass suitcase filled up with all of their gaming gear. I've actually seen some docks like this for the Nintendo Switch back when it came out. They were actually like notorious for bricking the Nintendo Switch because basically what people were doing was deconstructing the official Nintendo Switch dock and then rebuilding it as their own like charger dock combo USB wall plug type situation. Uh, I think you're a little bit safer with something like this because JSOX makes plenty of docks. I know there was an issue at launch where some docks would leave the Steam Deck screen black and it felt like your deck was bricked, but it actually wasn't. It just like wasn't turning the screen back on and if you held the power button and restarted the deck it would get all sorted. But Valve has done a really good job updating the thing since then and at this point I think you could go with pretty much any dock, whether it's the iVolar dock, the JSOX dock, or the official Steam Deck dock, or this new one that's like a wall outlet charger version that has these three ports. I do think this is more of a supplemental dock, like it's one you just leave in your backpack all the time to use in a pinch, or of course, like I mentioned, when you're traveling, because it's missing a lot of the ports that all of the other docks have, because obviously it's so much smaller. You're missing the three USB-A ports, you're only getting one here. You're missing the display port, you're also missing the 10 gig ethernet port that is included on the Steam Deck dock. Of course, those are things that are going to cost you more in the long run, right? Like if you wanna get the higher end JSOX dock, that's gonna be like 50 or 60 bucks. If you wanna get the official Steam Deck dock, that's gonna run you $90, but of course, it does come with the extra charger that you need to power it, which is why it costs so much more. So yeah, I would definitely make sure you get one of those first because you're gonna want all of those extra ports for your main desk setup, like I have mine set up. And then if you're traveling or going out or just need like a charger that you can have handy, when you're at a hotel or something and want to throw your Steam Deck up on a TV and play some games, this is like the perfect thing to keep in your backpack. But yeah, big shout out to JSOX for sending this over. I love these weird docks. I love all the innovation that's happening behind the scenes over there because it's kind of reminding me of back when the Nintendo Switch came out and we got so many different accessories for that device. Next up, we got to talk about the Game Awards because there were actually quite a few announcements related to the Steam Deck. They were kind of quick announcements just like randomly throughout the show. One happened before the show, one happened in the middle. The first one is that Returnal is coming to PC at the beginning of 2023. And we know that on the back end, we've seen some of the images that have been uploaded to the Steam page for this game, and it's already deck verified. Returnal is one of the first PS5 exclusives that I bought, and it's kind of perfect for the Steam Deck. It's a roguelite, you're going through the same levels over and over and over, trying to get as far as you possibly can. And the issue that it had at launch is that a full run of Returnal can take up to five hours. And when you were putting the PS5 
PS5 in the rest mode, sometimes the game would crash and you would lose the ability to continue where you left off. They did add in a quick save feature. So you can quick save if you want to be done with the game in the middle of a run. Uh, it's kind of perfect for the Steam Deck though, because you can just put the Steam Deck into its own rest mode. And that's been super reliable for me. I mean, roguelites are basically made for the Steam Deck. Dead Cells is getting its Castlevania DLC. Hades 2 is coming. That'll be another heavy hitter on the Steam Deck, I'm sure, because graphically and just gameplay wise, it looks like more Hades. So I'm very excited for that. And then also a game that I never really thought would run on the Steam Deck until I saw how the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection runs is, of course, The Last of Us Part 1. I'm really excited about that game coming to Steam finally because it's coming out on my birthday, March 3rd, 2023. And you're actually going to get a $10 discount over the PS5 version of the game, which was a full $70 game. On Steam right now, it's 60, but I would definitely make sure you check Green Man Gaming before this comes out because every one of these PS5 to PC ports, I've been able to get for around 40 bucks before they come out, which like is nice, right? Like I'm all for paying full price for games at launch, but I already bought all these games for full price on PS4 and PS5. So yeah, I, I'm fine getting the discount on Green Man Gaming there because as far as I know, Green Man Gaming is pretty legit. And now that we're getting Returnal and we're getting The Last of Us Part 1, uh, it leaves very few games on the table to still be ported by Sony. Of course, God of War Ragnarok, I'm assuming that game will come sooner rather than later. I'm excited for that to play that all over again because that's my game of the year. But the one game that's still missing that we heard was going to be ported like a long time ago is Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut. Man, I need to play that game on the Steam Deck. Just having the side stuff to knock out there and then the bigger story beats I could knock out. On my TV with my DualSense connected to my gaming PC, that's the utility of the Steam Deck that I love so much. Switching between the TV mode and actually just jumping onto a handheld and having my save be right there. I'm so excited to try that out with Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut. So hopefully we don't have to wait too much longer to hear about that. And of course, one of the best Steam Deck games, Death Stranding, is getting a sequel from Hideo Kojima, Death Stranding 2. The trailer wasn't really that cryptic this time around. It was very straightforward. Fragile is healed. BB is kind of growing up. Sam looks older. Troy Baker's character got a visual makeover. I'm really curious about that game and I cannot wait to play it. We knew it was coming because Norman Reedus actually leaked it a long time ago. So it was good to see it finally confirmed. And then the other big update from the Game Awards is that Valve was giving away a Steam Deck every minute of the show. Uh, Jeff Keighley, you knew he was probably kind of mad about Christopher Judge doing an eight minute speech and getting played off because he kept saying, man, we gave away so many Steam Decks during that uh, speech, but hey, they're the ones who said they were giving away the Steam Decks every minute. And one of the funnier things that happened during the show was that a winner of one of these Steam Decks was uh, Milf Hunter. So congratulations to Milf Hunter on your brand new Steam Deck. I really hope you enjoy it. And I hope that's your Steam name so everyone can add you on Steam, Milf Hunter. Good job, buddy. Next up, since we're in the beginning of December, we got the list of most played games in November on the Steam Deck. And there hasn't really been too much movement, but there are a few different games versus October. This month, I'm gonna go from number one to 10. I think last month I went 10 to one, but the list I'm looking at is in reverse order. So that's what I'm doing. So starting out with, we have Vampire Survivors at number one. This is still holding strong as the most played Steam Deck game. And I totally understand why. It's incredibly addicting. And if you enjoy it, I highly recommend checking out the game Dome Keeper. It's got the same addictive roguelike gameplay loop, but it's also got a little bit of a looter element to it. I absolutely love that game. It's a little more expensive, obviously, than Vampire Survivors because, I mean, there are very few games that are cheaper than Vampire Survivors, but I think it's totally worth the asking price. Number two is Persona 5 Royal, and I'm honestly shocked this wasn't at number one just because this is like over a 100 hour game. I'm assuming it's because so many people have already played it. The original version of this game was released a long time ago, then Royal came out, and now it's on Nintendo Switch, it's on the Steam Deck, it's on the Xbox, it's on everything now. So yeah, that at number two, a little bit surprising, but there is sort of a lot of reasons to explain why. Number three is a game that I would expect to rise in December because it just won Game of the Year at the Game Awards, and that game is Elden Ring. I highly recommend Cryobite 33's video on getting perfect performance out of that game. It's really good with his tweaks. The changes are honestly minor, but getting a consistent 30 FPS out of the game is totally worth the effort. Number four is Cyberpunk 2077, and I hope other AAA devs see this and start implementing Steam Deck graphic presets for their games because CD Projekt Red has been reaping the rewards of doing that for months now. Five is yet another addicting game, Stardew Valley. I have started this game like a hundred times. It's just not for me. My fiance really likes it on her Nintendo Switch. Another game that I'm not shocked to see on this list. Six and seven are two of the best open world RPGs pretty much of all time. 
Skyrim, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, and of course The Witcher 3. Uh, I like The Witcher 3 a little bit more than Skyrim. I don't know if that's blasphemy, but this game runs incredibly on the Steam Deck, and I would expect it to stay in this top 10 list and slowly work its way down as time goes on. Of course, The Witcher 3 is getting a new patch on December 14th with new graphics, and you can get a new armor set that's inspired by Henry Cavill's armor in the show. Unfortunately, he's leaving the show, but it seems like the armor is pretty cool, and Digital Foundry said that the graphics update is insane. At number eight is a game I see a lot of my Steam friends playing, but I haven't checked out myself. It's called Brotato. So if you play this game, let me know what you think down in the comments below. At number nine is Red Dead Redemption 2, and number 10 is Fallout 4. Now, these are all great games. I love that Vampire Survivors is on there. I just hope that in December, with so many Steam sales happening, so many people getting new games, we see some movement in this list because every month it sort of seems like there are a lot of contenders that basically just move spots and never really leave the list. This might be a crazy assumption, but I think we could see Marvel's Midnight Suns on there just because it runs pretty well on the Steam Deck and it's also a very long game. I've heard it clocks in at like 60 or 70 hours. And of course, I think getting into next year, Dead Cells will make its way up the list once we get that Castlevania DLC. And the last story is we have an update on the EA situation over on the Steam Deck. So if you guys hadn't heard, EA basically switched over from the Origin app to a new app that's called the EA app and it was breaking games. Like you couldn't launch any games, whether you're using Proton GE or Proton 7.0, the games would just kind of hang. They would open up this new EA app and they would just freeze and you weren't actually able to play your games. There were some ways around it with some games. I know with Jedi Fallen Order specifically, a lot of people have said that you can just add the EXE as a non-Steam game and that'll completely skip the launcher. But if you don't want to go through that whole file structure and you'd rather just play it officially, the new fix is super simple. All you have to do is play the game in experimental mode. And I've only tried this with a couple games, but it worked with both of them. The two games being Need for Speed Unbound and Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order for that one, I've got to give a shout out to Steam Deck HQ. Now this is a game, no matter where you play it, that has like loading stutter. It's got like frame rate drops, which are kind of irritating. But on Steam Deck specifically, I've noticed that it has a lot more loading stutter than it does on my main gaming PC, or it did on the PS5, which is where I originally played it. So I went over to Steam Deck HQ and I plugged in all their settings. And there's one critical setting you got to know for this game. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's set to use the performance profile only for this game. So it doesn't apply it to all your games. So make sure that's checked. And the critical setting you're going to want to change is setting the GPU clock speed to 1100 megahertz. I don't know why this works, but it almost completely eliminates the loading stutter in this game. Like you still get it in the same spots you would get it on the PlayStation 5 where you're going between areas in certain levels, but it really smoothed out the entire experience. And I was able to run it at mostly high settings at 30 FPS locked. I know some people like to play this game at 40 FPS, but no matter what settings I tried, it was really hard to get close to a locked 40 FPS at 40 Hertz out of this game. So if you can stomach it, it runs pretty well at 30 FPS. And this is a really good handheld game. It's got a really cool difficulty slider where if you go up to the highest difficulty, uh, it's not exactly harder. It's just like, you've got to be better at the game and you can take less hits. So I highly recommend it with that simple trick, setting it to Proton Experimental and then setting your GPU clock speed to 1100 megahertz. Then everything should work completely fine after that. And if you're having trouble with any other EA games, some people have been saying that the experimental trick doesn't always work and the only way to fix it is to remove the Proton files, which you can do from the properties of the game. It's easier to do in desktop mode, but once you do that and switch it over to experimental, it's going to like recache everything and it should work out just fine. So yeah, that's the big Steam Deck news for the week. I think it's probably going to slow down a little bit as we get closer to the end of the year and they'll probably come back a lot stronger in 2023. Regardless, uh, if you want to check out this JSOX portable dock, it's linked down in the description and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.